Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to this week's webinar. And uh, we're here at beautiful Tiffany Greens Golf Club in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm Brendan Cooper. And uh, as always, we're brought to you by Medicus Golf and KKX Golf. This week's webinar is talking about how you should practice instead of standing out in the rain just beating golf balls. So, Brendan, how much does somebody learn from just raking over ball after ball with no specific thought as far as practice? As far as learning anything, not much. <laughs> it can be more harm than good. So you can stand out there and beat balls all day long, but if you don't know exactly what it is you're trying to do, or you don't have a specific uh, setup, what we like to call a training station, you could be trying to ingrain all the wrong things again. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we've got we shot some video for you to show you three or four separate drills and how to set up for it. So I'm going to go up and screen share this with you. If you have any questions. Type the questions in the sidebar, and at the end of, of the webinar, we'll go through those. All right, so hang on one second. Hang on one second here. We're uh, we're getting too much overlay through Google, so we need to stop this for a second. All right, and let me try it one more time here. We want to do this. We want to do the uh, desktop. And let's see if we can bring it up. All right, well, we're having a little bit of an issue here. Um, worked fine in the testing today. I don't know why it's not working fine now. So let me just try it uh, one more time here. And we want to see what's in the chat box. Nothing yet. Alrighty, one more. Hang on one second here. I'm going to bring that window up. There we go. So now maybe we can actually show it. There we go. Hey, I'm here today with Brendan Cooper with Activity Greens Golf Club in Kansas City, Missouri. And Brendan, you know, people all the time think that they just go out to the range and they beat golf balls and that's good for them. So today we're going to show them some drills that they can actually work on. It does require them to set something up. Right. So the first one we're going to talk about is if, if your ball is starting right, left, thin, fat, whatever. Let's, let's show them a drill that we use a lot to get to show them how to get the ball started one way or the other. Yep. Yeah, so the, the first thing we want to do is, is, is definitely make sure we lay down an alignment rod. We want to take alignment out of the equation because so many times people would just hit balls and they don't know where they're aimed. So lay an alignment rod down to make sure that you get you know your body in a good position for your target line. And then if you've got, uh, we've got a cone up here, which you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot. They're, they're not very expensive, but just something that, to put on your start line or on your target line so you have a reference of where the golf ball's starting. So... So, so let's say, I mean, and you can even use an alignment rod. You can just take one of these and stick it in the ground on a parallel line to your to your alignment line here, and you can use that as well. So uh, the cone will make a noise if you hit it, and that's why we like to use it. So if I wanted to work on starting the ball to the right of the cone mm -hmm. from a square alignment, where would I have to point my club face at address? Well, if you want to start it to the right of the cone there, so... You know, we'll all go ahead and get set up here and make sure that my body's good alignment here to the rod. But in order for that ball to start to the right of the cone, we know that the face needs to be pointing to the right of that cone. Right. You know, so, I mean, a lot of people, you know, think that they've got to have the club face dead square or they got to feel like it's, it's shutting at impact where, you know, in order to hit the right amount of draw, the face has got to be slightly open at right. impact. So if they, want, if they want to start the ball to the right, point the face to the right address, they want to 
uh, struck the ball to the left, point the face to the left, mm -hmm. and address. Yes. Then just make slow swings. I mean, go back to about waist high to waist high and get this ball started. Go ahead and just make a about a you know waist high to waist high swing. Start the ball to the right with about a twenty percent swing. There you go. You get it started to the right. So now if I want to start it to the left. Again, do these from a square stance. If I want to start to the left, I would just point the face to the left, and I'd make the same swing. Learn how to get the ball started where you want it to start. Right then, once you get it started in that direction, we can work on the path mm -hmm. to fix the curve to make it go back to your target. Exactly. Right. Right, so now we're going to use what we call the gate drill. And this is for those of you that your path is either too much inward to outward or Outward to inward. So Brendan has this set up right now for those of you that feel like you're swinging out and across more out and in. So go ahead and run through this, Brendan. I don't know how you're doing here. Yeah, what you'll do is you'll need you'll need three golf balls. Uh, you'll put uh, the ball you're going to hit is going to be on your target line, but then you're going to put two other golf balls about a club head width, kind of at a 45 degree angle across your target line. So again, like Chuck was saying, for players that have a tendency to come too far from out across and in on the shot well if you make that kind of swing so if I get set up to this middle ball and I go up to the top of my backswing now if my path is too far from out to in I'm going to start catching this outside ball and just kind of hit all three balls so you can visually create a gate here to really make you feel like you're coming more from the in to out part so so now we, so now we got too many so now you got the rare player that's too much you know, inward it, outward. Right. So basically, what we do is we just move these this way. You just exactly. You just you just flip flop it then. And and again, this is um, rarely. I mean, I, more times than not, ninety percent of the time we're working it the other way. But again, for somebody that's coming way too far from inside to out, getting across your line, then you would just reverse it. And again, you're going to feel much. It's going to feel like the player's coming over the top. But if you're hitting that middle ball, you've got a pretty good path going right. in. So any of these drills or things that we show you, this is stuff that you can do on the range when you're practicing to make your practice more productive instead of just beating range balls. Yes. You know, and I'd have to say that the biggest problems we see is we see a lot of path issues. Mm -hmm. We see a ton of people that don't have nearly enough weight forward, key number two. Right. right? And then we see a lot of people that don't have key number three, flat left wrist. Right, right? Or exactly. Or clutch shaft. So we're going to set up a couple of drills for those as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about weight forward. And like Chuck and I were talk, mentioned earlier, um, a lot of people just don't realize how much weight that you need to have on your front leg when you're striking a ball. Because weight forward you know, also affects a lot of other keys, and most notably the flat left wrist when you're coming into impact. Because if I'm setting up to the ball here and I make a back swing, now if I keep feel like my weight staying on my back foot here, there's a good chance that when I come through, I'm going to lose this inline condition with the left left arm and club shaft. So, what I've done here is we put a um, this is a this is a broken shaft. So you can use a broken shaft, or you can use an alignment rod, or even uh, a bag stand that you may find on the driving range. And what you'll want to do is is you'll just want to set it right off the instep part of your left foot. So when you do that, you're going to see that this I've got a little bit of space here with this shaft. Uh, with it being off the inside part of my or the outside of my left foot. So then when I make a back swing and I get to the top, now when I start down, I'm going to try to take my lower body and I'm going to try to push it into that golf shaft. So now you can see I've got a lot of weight going towards my front foot here. So I feel a lot more weight, a lot more pressure working into my left side. And that will help you get the sensation of making sure that you've got weight going to the left getting it on the front foot at impact. All right, for this drill, we've got an old shaft with the end cut out, and we've got an alignment stick stuck in it. And we're going to use this a couple of different ways, because we, you'll see players, and again, it goes hand-in-hand -hand with the gate drill. Some players are more outward to inward, and some are more inward to outward, and they can get to the extreme. Mm -hmm. So the ideal thing we want to set up is we want to try to set this up on the angle that your club sets at address. So let's say you have somebody that is too much inward to outward in their downswing. They would want to feel like from the top, right, that they are moving 
They can feel like they're moving your chest. They can feel like their right shoulder's moving outward a little more. Just keep it on top of that rod. Okay. Now the other the other person that is going uh, too much outward in the downswing, right from the same backswing. Now if they're going too much outward. You can feel like the hip is moving a little more cross line the hips, and the right shoulder staying back a little longer. And that will change the angle to bring it more what we call uh, inward to outward. All right. So you can really tell with mirror drills. Yep. I mean, if you take a mirror, if, you, if the camera is a mirror, you get up here and you swing down and your shaft looks like this, I mean, that's a pretty good direction. This thing's going really yes. okay, outward, inward to outward, right? Yes. And it's the same thing if you get up here and the shaft's pointing this way, that's a pretty good indication that your path is going to go that way. Yep. So you can feel it a lot of different ways, but, the end of, but at the end of the day, you have to do whatever you have to do as a player to get this ball started where you want to start. Exactly. And then control that curve. So this is really easy to set up on the tee line. And you really don't need one quite this tall, but this is just to illustrate so I can see it. You can use just one of these shafts out there mm -hmm. to do the same thing. Yep. And there's a lot of things that you can do with alignment sticks. You know, alignment sticks, two by fours, a ton of things you can do. Right? Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to add to this one? No, I mean, I think, you know, we... Uh, we use these things day in and day out when we're teaching. Right. And the, the thing that, uh, you know, we talked about earlier is, is is once we leave a student, you know, it's you're going to be much more better off if, if you take these little things and practice these things on the range instead right. of just going through the motions and hitting a bunch of golf balls. That's right. Set up a drill station. If, if, again, if, if, you're, if you're working on trying to get this club to come a little bit more from, from more inward to outward, set up a drill station that's forces you to do that. Yes. Right? I mean, if you go to a PGA Tour event, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they have all their training aids out. They have their practice stations out. Thursday, it all goes away, and they have to play golf. Yep. So the best players in the world set up training stations. So just to go out and beat balls is, if you just want to exercise, there's a lot better ways to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't do anything. You need to have some kind of practice, right, you're going to do it needs to be a real concentrated form of practice working on whatever it is you're going to work yes. on. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. So we hope uh, we hope you got something off of those training drills. If you have any others that you want to work on on a specific problem, you can let us know. We'll be happy to film some of those for you. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Brendan? Uh, I think you know we covered a lot of it there in the video. Just you know, use your practice time you know wisely and make sure you're doing it as effective as possible. Right. I mean, you might be much better off going out and working on something very specific with your with your training area set up, hitting 40 to 50 balls. Rather than grabbing a hundred balls and just going out and bashing them, exactly. and then we would take your training uh, space that you set up, your training area, and you're you're set up to hit these towards one specific target. Move that area so that you start hitting it to different targets from the same training space. Now, for some reason, my chat window is not showing up, but I do know we had a question last week, and it was about somebody that said that the right hand was getting into the putter too much, and one of the things that I told them was. They can either go left hand low, which would be putting your left hand lower on the putter, which keeps this right wrist more of a bent feel, and now you just kind of push it through with your arm like this. And then the other thing you can do is grip down on the putter, run this putter up your forearm, and grab it like this. Burn hard longer, actually put it like this for a long time to take out that move. All right, so that's one way you can do that. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, not sure what we're going to talk about next week, but we, but we will have one next week. Uh, and I will be up in uh, Raleigh, Durham at the uh, at the teaching summit we're having next week next weekend, along with a lot of other great teachers. So if you have any questions, be sure to email them to us, and we will see you next week. <laughs>